In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing if you're able for our opening song, hymn. Dear friends in Christ, let us draw near to God our Father with a true heart to confess our sins and ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. <coughs> our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my sins to the Lord. Then he forgave the guilt of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we confess to you that by nature we are sinful and unclean and that we have sinned against you by thought, word and deed. Therefore we f flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and plead for your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most merciful God, you have given your only Son to die for us. Have mercy on us and for his sake grant us forgiveness of all our sins. By your Holy Spirit increase our knowledge of you and your will and make us obedient to your word, so that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, receive the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ who has given to his church the authority to forgive the sins of those who repent and to declare to those who do not repent that their sins are not forgiven. So therefore, upon your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. On behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ, and by his command, forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 67, and I'll lead this with a response from you as you'll see it from the screen. <coughs> may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. 
May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May the peoples praise you. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. The land yields its harvest, God. Our God blesses us. <coughs> May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray that we love one another. We pray. Jesus, our loving friend and saviour, you have promised to give us your spirit to be with us forever. Stay within our hearts so that we love one another as you have loved us. For you live and reign in the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear God speak to us in his word. First reading for today comes from Acts chapter 16, verses 9 to 15. Paul takes the good news to Philippi. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace. And the next day we went on to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. And we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshipper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptised, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Revelation chapter 21, verse 10, and 22 to verse 22, um, verse 5. The New Jerusalem. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honour of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city, 
On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of a sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel if you're able. The gospel for today comes from John chapter 14, verses 23 to 29. I am going to the Father. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Friends, we respond to hearing the word by speaking our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our next hymn.
My friends, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Let me share with you from John chapter 14, verse 1 and then verse 27. But Jesus says, Do not be worried and upset. Believe in God and believe also in me. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Don't be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. A plane landed after a long flight. The flight attendant explained that there was enough time for everyone to get off the aircraft and then reboard in 50 minutes. Everyone got off the plane except one gentleman. The pilot had noticed him as he walked by. He could tell that the man was blind because his guide dog lay quietly underneath the seat next to him. Sir, the pilot said to the blind man, we'll be here for almost an hour. Would you like to get off and stretch your legs before the next leg of our flight? The blind man replied, no thanks, but maybe my dog would like to stretch his legs. So picture this. All the people in the gate area came to a complete standstill when they looked up and saw the pilot walk off the plane with the guide dog. The pilot was even wearing sunglasses. Now fear took control. People scattered and queued at the airline desk trying to change their flight plans. Now I'm not sure how true this story is, but it would have been a sight to see. When fear takes control of us, we experience the absence of peace. Fear brings with it worry, dread, anxiety, and panic. You know, there's many things for us to worry and be fearful about in our world, and even closer to home here in Australia, even in our own homes here in Loxton. When we watch or read the news, we may be fearful of what is happening in places like Russia and Ukraine, in places in Africa like Nigeria. We may be fearful of what China is up to. We may be worried and concerned about our planet and the changing climate. That may bring us fear about the future. We may be fearful we can't make the next mortgage repayment and what that will mean for our lives. We may be fearful and worried about our children going out at night. We may be fearful and concerned about caring for our parents in their old age. We may be fearful and dread-filled about specific philosophies of life that are challenging our Christian values. Some people could be job security having enough money, what the world will be like for our children and grandchildren. I could go on and on. Robert, you take, I invite you for a moment to think, what is it that you're fearful of? What brings you concern, worry or anxiety? Is there something that you perhaps obsess about? that you can't get out of your mind, that drives you to worry. What are you fearful of? One of the best newspaper cartoons is Calvin and Hobbes. And one day, Calvin comes marching into the living room early one morning. His mother is seated there in her favourite chair. She is sipping her morning coffee. She looks up at young Calvin. She is amused and amazed at how he is dressed. Calvin's head is encased in a large space helmet. His cape is draped around his neck across his shoulders down his back and is dragging on the floor. In one hand, he's holding a flashlight, and in the other, he's holding a baseball bat. What's up today? 
asks his mum. Nothing so far, answers Calvin. So far, she questions. Well, you never know, Calvin says. Something could happen today. Then Calvin marches off. And if anything does, by golly, I'm going to be ready for it. And then Calvin's mum looks out at the reading audience and she says, I need a suit like that. You know, maybe a suit like that would help so that we can say along with Kelvin, whatever comes my way, I'm going to be ready for it. Bring it on. Well, unfortunately, I don't have a suit like Calvin's to give to you this morning. And I'm certain, well, not certain, that many of you would actually leave wearing one anyway and go into town to do your shopping at Foodland wearing a space helmet and a cape. But what we do have are the words of Jesus to his disciples. His disciples who were filled with fear about the future, a future without their Lord. And so we have this scene in John 14. It's between the Lord's Supper, or the washing of the disciples' feet in chapter 13, and the crucifixion of Jesus. And the friends of Jesus, they, they know that he'll be leaving them. And this is terrible news. They're uncertain about the future, fearful of what will happen next. And that's when Jesus says to them, don't be worried and upset. Believe in God and believe also in me. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. These words of Jesus fill us with the hope to say, whatever may come my way, I'm going to be ready for it. Bring it on. Jesus says, the peace he gives is not like the world gives. Leads me to ask, well, what is the type of peace that the world gives? I think worldly peace is always conditional. It's always temporary. And in the world that Jesus lived, the peace the people experienced under the Roman Empire was actually one of fear. The fear of death and violence. And this fear was used to keep people in line to produce peace. But it led to fear within the human heart and mind. It was a fake peace. And so Jesus speaks into this world and he speaks into our world too because we're not too dissimilar. And the peace Jesus offers is unconditional and everlasting. His peace captures the heart and mind and provides the rest that the weary soul seeks. So if you're troubled in your life about things outside of your control, Jesus invites you to come to him to receive his peace. When fear grips your heart, remember that Jesus promises to be with you always. And he has promised you his Holy Spirit which is the spirit of comfort and peace. When you are fearful, ask Jesus, pray to Jesus for his peace to cover the fear that you may be experiencing in your life. When things are getting too hard, we also have the promises of scripture that remind us that the Holy Spirit will pray on our behalf. Taking our cries of fear and pain and lifting them up to God in prayer. We can also discover peace as we meet God in his word, as he comes to us, as we explore the words of those who have gone before us and experienced the same emotions. I'm specifically talking about the book of Psalms, a prayer book of the many emotions of God's people that we are blessed to have today. We discover God's peace as we meet together in community, as we worship, as we come to receive the meal of communion, receiving the gift of God's peace, his forgiveness for us. 
But above all, my friends, as we leave this place of worship this, this morning and we go back out into our world and into our lives, remember these words of Jesus. Peace is what I leave you. It is not my own peace that I... It is, sorry, I'll say this again. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Don't be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. Let me pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for these words that you have given to us this morning to reflect on. And I pray for this gift of peace to capture the hearts of all your people gathered here this morning. Especially those who may be filled with fear or worry or uncertainty at this time. May they know of your everlasting and unconditional peace which you freely give through your son Jesus. Heavenly Father, when fear grips us, help us to lean into you and to find the rest and the peace that you freely give to us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our next hymn, Give Us Hearts to Know You, Lord. <coughs>
pray together our offering prayer. You may remain seated. Lord, you have made us yours and have given us your spirit to live in us. Help us to live as your people. Use us and what you have given us to do your work among others. Amen. Our Lord Jesus promised that the Father would send us his spirit. Therefore, in the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence to the Father for all our needs. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for coming and making your home in us, despite our brokenness and sin. And thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit as our teacher, so that we are not alone in our learning. Help us to keep your word in our hearts and minds and to fully engage in the life of the church as our practical school of faith. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all people that they may know themselves loved and forgiven by you for Jesus' sake. Teach us by your word of spirit to receive your love and your presence with joy and gladness and so to spread your word throughout the world. Lord, support all missionaries and bring fruit to their labours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the church that it would love you by loving others. Teach us by your word and spirit to care for those who are isolated and lonely, that we may be present with them with friendship and faith and with hospitality and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations that there may be peace so that your word can go out unhindered. Turn us to active repentance for all wrongdoing and teach us by your word and spirit to abandon our culture of depravity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our town of Loxton, that you may bless our daily work and family life. Teach us by your word and spirit to honour you in all our relationships and keep our lives free from sin and destructive behaviour. Lord, we lift up to you the government and particularly the election of our new Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. Bless the new government as it forms, Lord God, and may they continue to be uh, a government that seeks justice, a government that governs wisely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all in need, for the sick and the sorrowing. Provide, heal and comfort them with your life-giving presence. Lord, on this day we lift up to you Glenis Albrecht, Pastor Darren, Maureen and Neville Rosenzweig, Leanne Schultz, Beth Ryman, Leanne Kaysler, Judy Folting, and Martin Obst. And hear us now, Lord God, as we bring before you those people whom we know to be in need, and those people that you have placed on our hearts at this time, whatever their needs may be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God Almighty, as Lydia was taught by your word and spirit, so that she welcomed you into her heart, open our hearts also to make a home for you. And when our last hour comes, take us to that heavenly city to dwell in the everlasting light of your glorious presence. For you live and reign as one God, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, 
the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. I'd like to remain standing if you're able for our closing song.